one of these days I'm going to write it and call it my daddy. Now, my mommy wasn't really Scottish, you know. She come from Tobago, she was a true, true Toboganian. And my daddy was half Scottish, half Welsh, half African, half Chinese, and half Amerindian. <laughs> was a full-blooded Trinidadian. But I always used to think he looked like a Malaysian. But you see, so no amount of political correctness could dilute my inspiration of being a full-bodied, true, true, stereotypical West Indian. <coughs> I had the other day to fill out an American census form. You know, they have boxes where you tick off who you are. Me? Asian, tick. <laughs> Hispanic, tick. <laughs> Native American, tick. <laughs> Black, tick. <laughs> White, talk. <laughs> and I your mouse running up the clock. And the top of the pot, my grandchildren, like Emerald, the TV chef, knock it up an, a notch. Bam, Portuguese. Bam, East Indian. Bam, Brazilian. La, 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 da, da, da. With the exception of a relatively small number of Amerindians, Caribbean people have all come from somewhere else, across the Atlantic, into the belly of the Americas. And so it was that the Caribbean was born. And then I saw, or rather heard it, the pebbles of the pan, the plangent syllables of blue, the unrolling syncopation, the rhythmic tidaletics. And it was the island's own sound, not taken or borrowed from nowhere else. Or if borrowed, borrowed so creatively, it becomes our own. And the irksome wonder, why so long? Why did it take so long? Take me so long to come to this. So natural, so obvious, so beautiful, so easily our own. The Kaiso. So that when God created the Caribbean, he took a pebble, skidded it along the water with a sound of our own, and this is how it went. His archipelago, my vision, your boy. The stone had arced and bloomed into islands, Cuba and San Domingo, Jamaica and Puerto Rico, Grenada, Guadalupe, Bonne, curved stone hissed into Wave teeth fanged into spray. Bashiba, Montego Bay. Yeah, man. Your mama guy me now. Nah, man. Going down the road for a line. At the time of producing this documentary, 12 Caribbean countries are creating an open economy called the Caribbean Single Market and Economy, CSME. Article 45 stipulates that member states commit themselves to the goal of free movement of their nationals within the community. Going down the road for their line. Real old talk. Just chilling, cooling it. Yeah, we. Papa, yo. You alright? Nah. Going down the road for their line. Real old talk. Yeah, man. Nah, man. Yeah, that song is real good. Your mama guiding me now. Just chilling. Cooling it. Yeah, we. You all right? Then Her Royal Highness stood to declare the Federal Parliament inaugurated. And members of the Senate. Mr. Speaker, and members of the House of Representatives, I now declare the Federal Legislature of the West Indies to be inaugurated. I will now read the message of Her Majesty the Queen. Unlike the Experiment of Federation in 1958, the CSME is an intergovernmental arrangement between sovereign states. 
but does current leadership demonstrate the right to lead the economic integrative process? Are these nations developed enough to be responsible social partners? Or is the driving force simply to increase profiteering among an already existing elite? Characterized by waves of migrant experience, the Caribbean became one of the world's largest experiments in hybridity. Themes now fashionably debated in first world academic centers, ambiguity, doubleness, creolization and globalization, had their matrix in the Caribbean. And what about intra-regional migration? In 1977, political activist Walter Rodney noted that there were three waves of migration from Barbados into Guyana between 1835 and 1928. As planters required imported labour because of the unavailability or intractability of local workers. Barbadian immigrants were strongly resented as economic competitors. Rodney states that as the Indian population in Guyana grew to outnumber the Afro-Guyanese, debates on immigration shifted. Afro-Guyanese now portrayed Barbadian immigrants not as competitors, but as allies in the struggle against Indo-Guyanese dominance. Threatening to some, the CSME is only an economic attempt to regularize what many migrants have been living for quite some time. We were the responsible inheritors of the region's genetic irresponsibility. <laughs> My fair skin, part English, part African, part Portuguese, Guyanese mother, used to say to us children with an amused, ironic smile, never mind, my dears, that on your head black pepper grows. You all have lovely teeth. And my black Barbadian father, equally amused, would reply with a twinkle in his eye, division of labor, Dorothy. You supply the teeth, I supply the black peppers. <laughs> and then they would laugh at the racial folly of the colonial color code. So what do Caribbeans have to say about the CSME and Article 45, which speaks about this free movement of people? Historically, the Caribbean was a free movement area. Under the colonial system, and this is remarkable, under the colonial system, you could travel to the whole Caribbean on a schooner without a passport, without checking through immigration or customs, enter and live. I see, I see, actually, I see women, 
for the company, for the organizations. I see three wins. Win for the organization, win for the people, because they're, surely if you're earning more money in any country, you, you can have a better standard of living. And three, I see win for the country, because now the countries will be more balanced in their, in their labor force, regardless of, of area, because we, we, we can move wherever we need to. I think the problem, though, is one that can be come at from another angle. For example, a leading Jamaican intellectual who spends much of his time in England these days, um, Stuart Hall, says that what we need to do is to rethink the nature of the relationship which we share with one another, a relationship, obviously, of difference. And it seems to me that once you start to think not in binary terms, but in terms of a relationship of difference, then, you know, the chances are that we can rethink how we relate to one another. That's a more fertile direction to go in, a much more productive one. And it will allow us, I think, to abandon earlier notions of identity, ones that are inherited by a colonialism. I am the complex Creole. My context is the Caribbean, Caribbean. an archipelago crocheted into a crossbreed of carnival, class, and commerce. Cognizant of Columbus and the Commonwealth that created these confused colonies, correctly criticized for the callous treatment of the Amerindian and the reconstitution of a Caribbean caste system. Several centuries later, my coronary artery crackles when I think of the creatures that created this cacophonous confusion. And although we collide, there is more chaos than community. Some feel like foreigners, as though uncharacteristic of these now ex-colonies, our natural native islands. I celebrate the chorus of the Creole chant. Six weeks ago, on a Saturday morning, it was about five o'clock, and we heard banging on the door. People saying, open up, police and immigration, police and immigration. My uncle got up, opened the door. When they came in, they came with two and a half crowbars, saying that if we didn't open the door, they would have ripped it open. It was five o'clock in the morning, so we were still asleep. So when we opened the front door now, they came in. They said open the back and the side door. When we opened them, there was two of them outside, at the back, two at the side. They started saying, uh, bring, your, bring your passports and documents, bring your passports and documents. We took them out. It was my, myself, my uncle, my aunt, and three cousins that live in the house. All of us have papers. The, the, the chair and I have student visas. We brought them out. They, they, took, they took them, put me to sit down on the chair. They went in the room, start tumbling it, check under the beds, open the wardrobe, take out my aunt clothes, saying that people can hide in here, that guy needs like to hide. But my experience as an attorney has been that there's, there's great resistance to the movement of people. So there is, there is a, the policy that the CSME represents, and then there is a deviation with the real practice. I mean, you've seen it in Barbados, and I see it a lot here. Trinidad, that immigration officers are very reluctant many times to admit even legitimate visitors to Trinidad and Tobago. And there, there's a great, great deal of resistance to people from outside of Trinidad and Tobago coming to work here. Um, there's, a, there's a great deal of nationalism here where they want to keep the jobs for Trinidadians. And so even when the, the skill is not available in the country, many times we have difficulty getting a work permit. There's only one immigration officer, and the rest was all police. When he came in, he rejected the documents. When he finished, he told my uncle that he was very sorry, because everybody in the house has paper. Well, I think the CSME analogy is, is a very laudable objective in terms of the integration of the Caribbean as 
one economy. So I think there, there, there is a, 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 a great deviation between practice and what, what the intent of the CSME is. The CSME region comprises 6 million people with a combined economy of 60 billion Eastern Caribbean dollars. So why do we even need the CSME? Can the CSME protect people who migrate in response to a lack of access to proper education, suitable employment at home, and a lack of social and financial security? Why are Caribbeans moving in undocumented ways throughout the region? Well, I leave my country hoping that it would be a bit better here because things was tough back then. I had uh, two kids to support. I remember when I first came, I started working as a carpenter and I was only earning about $250 a week. And other carpenter told me that they were getting $100, and $100 a day and so on. As things stand right now, the Guyanese workforce in Barbados are just taking jobs which are there, which are vacant. Uh, there's a growing construction sector here, hotels, housing, and so on. And in fact, many of the big hotels and new hotels in Barbados have been majority built by Guyanese labor. Uh, so there's, 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 there's jobs there. Yet, despite CSME, current immigration laws don't allow for persons other than citizens of their own country to contest an incident involving immigration officers. For instance, I have friends I know who come back to Guyana. Some of them work with people. And when is the Friday afternoon you should receive pay? Instead, you see the immigration van come and you've been picked up and sent back. And look at the events of Terrible Tuesday, when Guyanese nationals were denied entry at the Barbadian border. The events of Tuesday, July the 19, 2005, first of all, is not unique. What's unique about it, perhaps, is the numbers that were sent back. But Guyanese being sent back or being put to sit on a bench at the airport, or now with the modern airport, uh, being put in a room, is nothing unusual. But on, on Terrible Tuesday, as, as it's called, or that entire day, 91 passengers came from Guyana, and 35 were sent back. On BW604, 26 came in on that flight in the evening, and 21 were sent back. Now, that's a very unusual statistic, and one has to wonder what could have happened, but so many persons on a flight, very different persons, unrelated, with different backgrounds, different reasons for coming, were nevertheless sent back. Some of the cases that were reported include, for example, a businessman and his family who came here, had his hotel booked, had US $4,000 on him, and yet he was asked, where did you get the money from? and he was sent back. Another case involved minors coming to Barbados to visit their mother who is married to a Barbadian and who actually got her citizenship on the 20th of July, the next day, when her children were sent back to Vienna. Another case involves a lady who came here to attend the wedding of her sister. Another one involves a lady coming to visit her husband who is legally working in Barbados. And another example is one I can speak of personally is my niece who came to visit me, and she was also sent back. Late in 2005, in response to Terrible Tuesday and other similar events, two Guyanese performed a skit at the first water break of a cricket match between Guyana and Barbados in Guyana. Well, a bit of extra entertainment there for the patrons. I would say depicting a fairly regular occurrence in uh, the, the world of travel nowadays in the Caribbean. I think the, the Guyanese um, authorities are concerned about this Bayesian. They probably think that he's coming in with a bit of magic to try and steal this game away from Guyana. 
do we as independent nations continue to perpetuate the attitudes of the mother country towards regional people who don't belong in our territories? It's very scary in the sense that um, you're always wondering if something's going to happen. You're not free in the sense that you feel as though you're in a mental prison. But on the other hand, it's um, it's a risk that I'm willing to take in the sense that I have a job, I'm working. I'm saving and making sacrifice. And it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to, to take right now because I'm young. But it is very difficult to be in this position. Political janissaries, ill-informed, ill-educated, ill-mannered opportunists whose philosophy of life cannot reach above the level of the groin, who pretend to champion the people, the people, fed on a diet of the bold and the beautiful, while their leaders shine iridescent as dragonflies, hovering over the stinking cesspits of corruption and, and, and corruption and pollution, which we flush daily into our sludge-colored rivers. Mm. Islands emptying their slop into the blue Caribbean, which washes it up like a poisonous scurf on all our beaches, into all our church-infested villages, into all our lives. The ship that will not let us go, but prevents us everywhere. And at what expense do we move? What happens to the family unit? My last son was born when I gave him he was seven months. And so our lady is going to be six years. And I'll be going back for the first time. Human, 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 human. I come to you. But I have a creed that I wear like a crest on my chest. My credentials are that I am created equally, credible from my cranium to my coccyx. I cleave to no church, temple, nor country. I sing the canticles and practice a yoga. I breathe, breath, I chant. Breath, breath, breath. I made my japa and wrote a creed. I owned a crucifix and acknowledged the crescent. I anoint myself with a communion of cinnamon, coffee, and cumin, cocoa, cotton, and cane. It is with composure and compassion that I conceive my compatriots as compatible, whether Cuban or Guyanese, Christian or Muslim, Hindu or Jew. I contemplate a Caribbean conservatory that is a consanguineous, conscious community confidently confirming a conglomerate who speak Patois, Papiamento, Spanish, and Creole. I celebrate the chorus of the Creole chant. I come to you. I come to you. It is possible for you to obtain a permit out of the legal system. Um, you, it's not safe in the sense that you might give somebody your money and your, per and your uh, passport and they might lose your passport and take your money and then there's nothing you can do about it because you're not, you're not legal. You can't go to the police because of the risk that you're not willing to take. I would like to say that um, being illegal is, is scary, it is hard. Caribbean countries reveal some of the highest immigration rates in the world. 
an international monetary fund working paper, indicates that the Caribbean has lost 10 to 40% of its labour force in emigration to first world countries. 89% of Guyana's tertiary educated workforce has left. The lack of opportunity at home means that taking the risk to try elsewhere, even with the danger of being coerced and exploited, is worth a try. Human trafficking signals coercion and exploitation. Less emotionally, however, it refers to transnational work sought out by people who migrate to look for work opportunities. And how do we think about ourselves as a community? I guess the first thing that I should address is myself as a people and a region. They say I'm white, but I am not a European. I'm not an African or an Indian or a Chinese or an Arabian or a Syrian or anything coming down in between. I'm none of these, yet I am all of these. I am a Caribbean. My ancestry is from India, and um, that's a few generations ago. But I feel, although I, I have the, the, the pride of, uh, of the ancestry and, and, what, um, and the, the richness of it, I feel very much a Caribbean person because I was born here. You know, the Irish Trinidadian has, you know, a Grenadian grandmother, a Vincentian grandfather. I do, I do. You know, my grandmother is a Vincentian, and my grandmother is a Grenadian, and one from Venezuela. So we are people, one people, one region. Build, build, build. That's what, what came out of that experience was the whole, the whole thing of building a region and building a regional consciousness. You know, we, we are separated here. We could jump on a plane, jump on a boat. But to cross that line here is the harder challenge. And it's something that we need to keep in mind here. Always. Everybody now build, build, build our country. Build, build, build our family. Build, build, build our society. Build, build, build a new humanity. Build, build, Let us imagine a different Caribbean space. As a complex Creole confronting this crossroads of centuries, I cannot condone the corruption, corruption. nor those who configure conflict. I outcast them from community. I contradict the universal way and commemorate the cobweb we have become. I come to you not as a comedian, nor as a clown. I come to you as a coalition of combustible matter. I come to you. A civilized collective, sometimes caustic, but never counterfeit. I am a cordless creator of culture, conveying my codes to a community that isn't convinced of the credit of cultural producers. And now I wear a coronet, a continuous circular. In my cipher, I chuckle, I weep. I celebrate the chorus of the 